Hi everyone and welcome to week 8. Uh, so this week we're going to be going over just tons of continuous distributions. Uh, so the first one we're going to be starting off with is the continuous uniform distribution uh, because it's kind of the easiest one to basically um, kind of do things with. Uh, so the continuous uniform distribution um, is just going to be a distribution that's constant. So um, remember how um, last week we were talking about a continuous distribution. So continuous distributions, if you recall, are going to have um, some function, um, fx, um, and these are going to be looking at some uh, intervals, a to b, and this is how we were defining our uh, continuous distribution. So in our case, our f of x, um, is just going to be some constant. Um, so what this means is, like, if you, you think about a graph, right? So say I have some graph. So I set, like, some graph. I'm going to have a constant graph, right? So I'll just draw some line. So this is my constant. Uh, so this is my f of x for continuous uniform distribution. Um, and that's it. So the density function, and it's going to be constant on some interval, not necessarily all the way over. Technically, it can't be all the way over, right? Because what's the one thing we need? We need the area to be less than, or it needs to be equal to one. So if it's all the way down, it's not going to work. So in other words, what we actually need is we need this to be some constant everywhere and then zero everywhere else. Um, so something like this. Uh, and here we'll say some constant. Um, and so basically the formula for this is, um, so we already know zero is everywhere else. Um, and the constant is actually going to be set for us. One over B minus A, if A is less than um, X, less than B. Here we're looking at my interval A, B. Now, why is this the case? Why, um, why do we only have one constant? Why can't I just choose any constant? Uh, well, the reason why is we have to remember that the area uh, must be equal to 1. So in other words, if I look at A and B here, this area inside, this must be equal to 1. Well, what is this equal to? This is just B minus A. So B minus A, that's this bottom part here, B minus A, uh, times the height. So base times height. Well, what's the height? This is C. Okay, well, so we'll multiply this by C. So we have 1 is equal to B minus A times C. Well, divide both sides by B minus A. And we get that C is equal to 1 over B minus A. That's our only option because the area has to be equal to 1. Um, so what is the probability function? The probability function for this is also really, really easy. So... Remember how this is just going to be, so we have c to d, so my integral is from c to d. My function, well, we already have my function, so I'll just do um, f of x. Technically, it's from b minus a. Um, here, I guess I should assume um, a less than or equal to uh, less than c, uh, less than or equal to d. No, I guess this should be strictly. Uh, less than or equal to, no, yeah, it's okay. This is less than or equal to, and this is less than b. So I forgot this in the notes. Um, so we have this, so inside of here, and we take the um, little fraction part, our infinitesimal part, and we're going to just take this integral. So if we take this interval, into, uh, integral, um, what do we get? Uh, this shouldn't be kind of too hard to look. You could actually sit and calculate this if you want, um, but it's almost easier to see in our little portion, um, our little graph here. So if I were to kind of look at this graph again, right? So I draw my little zero everywhere. I come up. I have, I'll make this a little bigger. I have my A, my B here, uh, and then I have my C and D here. But well, what I really want is to figure out the area here in proportion to the total area. So what I want is C minus D over 
b minus or b minus a and here i did this backwards this should be d minus c um and that's it right we're just calculating the percentage of the area and if you were to actually do this integral you would get the exact same thing so this integral ends up being d minus c over b minus a okay well what about expected value so we're going to start looking at, since we're doing distributions, we're just going to look at all the possibilities for everything. So what's the expected value? Well, this, um, remember, is just the integral from minus infinity to infinity, x times f of x. This is the definition. Um, here, because it's 0 everywhere except from, from a to b, we can just restrict ourselves from a to b. Um, and then in this case, we know what our x is. In this case, we just have b minus a x. Uh, so taking the integral here, we get x squared over 2 b minus a uh, from a to b. Um, and so this one we get b squared over 2 b minus a minus a squared over 2 b minus a. So we get b squared minus a squared over 2 times b minus a. Uh, and notice what happens here. This b minus b squared a squared, this is just b minus a b plus a. Uh, so I can cancel one of the, the b minus a's, right? So this and this can cancel. Uh, and I get b plus a over 2. And that's it. That's my expected uh, value, which makes sense because this is basically saying um, add these two numbers together and divide by 2, which puts you directly in the middle. So this is our expected value, our average, right? So this is basically where averages come from. It's coming from a unif continuous uniform uh, distribution. Um, now, this um, is actually a little tricky. So what we'll do is, like, uh, we don't really want to take these integrals for b plus a. Like, this is just really hard. Well, working with the nor uh, uniform distributions are a little... Um, like they're, they're easy, obviously, uh, but we'd like to work with something nicer. So in the next video, I'm going to look at a um, transformation of this into the standard continuous uniform distribution. Um, and that'll kind of make things um, a little crisper, a little nicer and a little more whole um, in essence. Uh, so I will see you then.